semi-automatic weapons, easily available with little documentation in our own country, and they're killing children. What will you do to confine semi-automatic weapons to use only by military and law enforcement? I am not going to take people's guns away, and I, I believe in gun control myself. Um, but I, you know, anybody who tells you that we can end the violence to our children that's going on now by removing people's guns, at, in, at the margin that has been left to us by this very expansive Supreme Court decision is not being truthful with you. So, you know, I think just legally, because of the, of the Supreme Court decision, because the expansive vision, the view that the Supreme Court has taken on the Second Amendment, um, that it makes it really impossible to actually do anything about it in, in terms of limiting people's guns. I also want to say this, that, you know, I have spent a lot of my time on my life in rural communities in this country, and there is a gun culture in those communities that is closely tied to people's identities. And so those people, that, that a large group of Americans see it as almost an existential threat. Um, when people in my political party and people like myself say to them that we're going to take your guns away, and it hasn't worked. It has polarized our country more, and it's made people dig in more. And I'm trying to end the polarization in our country. And I, so I think that this, and particularly in this point in history, in the last three years in this country, we've seen an all-out assault on our Bill of Rights. We've seen for the first time uh, the government participating in censoring people's speech. There is, you know, the, these revelations came out this week that the FBI has been collaborating with the SBU, the Ukrainian agency, to censor speech of Americans critical of U.S. policy against the Ukraine. We've seen the CIA and the FBI now ha had, during at least the last two administrations, at portals at Twitter where they can identify people who are speaking against government policies and silence them. And so we had these assaults on freedom of speech. We had the government come in and order without any scientific citation, without any democratic process, the closure of every church in this country for, for a year. We had an assault on freedom of religion. We had an assault with the, again, we had these social distancing um, regulations and policies that, uh, that again, were not based upon, we now know, and Rachel Rolensky and Anthony Fauci have acknowledged, they were not based on science. There was no democratic process. There was no public hearing. There was no notice and comment rulemaking. No scientific citation shown to any of us. And yet that was a direct assault on our right to assembly. We had every business, 3.3 million businesses in this country closed down in violation of the Fifth Amendment right to due process and just compensation. None of them were given due process or just compensation. We had the Seventh Amendment jury trial shut down against anybody who was providing a medical countermeasure, no matter how egregious their, your injury, no matter how, um, how, uh, how reckless or negligent their behavior, you can't sue them. And that's a violation of the Seventh Amendment. So there's a lot of people in this country who are watching this happen and say our entire constitution is under attack. And the only, the only provision that was not under attack is the Second Amendment. And a lot of the people who believe strongly about guns say, well, the reason they didn't attack the Second Amendment is because we have our guns. Now, whether you believe that or not, and I, you know, I, I'm not going to take a position on that one way or the other, but going after people's guns at this point in history, it, to me, is just going to cause more polarization and make it so that we can't listen to each other anymore because we get put into these kind of tribal silos where, which we have to somehow figure out a way to get past. So, oh, you know, my policy is going to be to figure out ways to protect these children. We cannot have any more school shootings. And, you know, one of the things, um, you know, even if that means protecting schools the same way that we protect airlines, you don't get shootings on airlines anymore. If we have to do that, we have to protect our children. The other thing we need to look at is 
the other reasons why this may be happening in our country. And, you know, I've gotten ridiculed for saying that we need to look at the issue of the SSRIs. If we, and, but it's one of the issues we need to look at. We need to look at video games. We need to look at uh, the you know, way that uh, social media is affecting people's behaviors and do the scientific studies that are required for that. There has never been a time in human history when strangers would walk into a, a, a room of children and begin shooting people. What happened? You know, I, we had guns when I was a kid. At the, you know, I went to school where we had a gun club in the school and kids would come with their rifles to school. And nobody was, nobody even imagined that somebody would go in that school and start shooting children. There's other countries that have as, almost as many guns as we do, like Switzerland, that don't have school shootings. So what is going on here? The last school shooting in Switzerland was 21 years ago. We have school shootings every 21 hours. One of the things we need to look at are SSRIs. There is one study that shows that at least 23% of school shootings have involved have that the shooter was at the time or prior or before was on SSRIs. So, uh, and if you look at the label the manufacturing the insert for these drugs, they say on them homicidal and suicidal ideation and action. So it's not insane to say we should look at this. Something changed in our country that started this. And it's not the guns. It, because we've always had the guns. Something else happened and we need to be looking. And that's the function of NIH. This is the biggest health threat in our country, these shootings. NIH is supposed to be doing science that actually looks at the cause. The, pro the problem is it doesn't want to do anything that will offend the pharmaceutical industry. So they will not even do a genuine study, and it's hard for the public or the press to figure it out because of the, uh, the HIPAA laws. You can't get that information on these shooters. But NIH can get the information, but it won't do it because it does not want to offend the pharmaceutical companies. And we ought to at least be looking at that.